This video is about movement and turns, and these are the four blocks that you'll be using in programming to move your motors. So these two are motor blocks. This one's for the medium motor, and this one's for the large motor. And it just moves one motor separately. So um, you can change the port for which motor you want to move at the top over here. And you could also do that for these two, which are move blocks, which moves both of the driving motors at once. So for the motor blocks, these are the parameters you'll be using. So this is power, which is a value from negative 100 to 100, and it's basically the speed of the motor. So you can change it using this slider, or you could put the number in there directly. So 100 will be full speed, and when it goes negative, that means that it goes backwards. So negative 100 will be full speed backwards. This is the measurement, which starts out as rotations, so how much you want the motor to move. And you can change it in the motor settings to degrees, seconds, on and off. This is break at end, so it's basically after the action is completed, if you set break at end to true, it will completely stop the motor. But um, if you say false, then it will coast, so it will still be able to roll a little bit after it's done. So if you want it to stop immediately, set this to true. For the large motor, it's the base set, same settings, but it's basically, yeah, it's basically the same thing, but it's for a large motor. So for the two move blocks, move tank and move steering, so what move tank does is that you can set the power for each motor individually. So if you make both of the power the same value, then it will go in a straight line. But if you make one of them greater than or less than the other, it will be different because one of them will be stronger than the other. And also, you can there's measurement here too. It's the same stuff as for the motor block and also break it end. If for move steering, what it does is there's one power for both the motors, but you can visually steer it. Um, so you can make it steer to the right or to the left, like this, by dragging this slider. And the rest is the same. Talking about the different kinds of turns you can do. So first, the pivot turn. You only you use a motor block. And so you only move one motor. So that one mo motor moves while the other one stays in place. So it kind of pivots around the other motor. This is a point turn. So you can use move steering and you move the slider all the way to either end for which way you want to turn. So what a point turn does is one of the motors moves forward while the other one moves backwards so it spins it in place which is good if you don't have enough space for your robot to turn around so it takes less space by moving around all in one point this is a curve turn which you can do using move tank where you set both of the powers but you make one of them greater than the other so since one of them is faster it curves to one of the sides. And you can also do a curve turn using um, move steering. And it shows it visually over here. This will be a curve turn. But curve turns are less accurate because it's all random based off, based off of power. And if you want to do a curve turn, it's still better to do move tank so you can see the number for the power. Yeah, so um, for more options um, for stopping the motor besides these, besides seconds, degrees, and rotations, you can use a loop. A loop has these built-in options for when to stop. So if you put a motor block, a move block inside here and set it to on, it will keep the motor will keep going until the loop, until whatever you set this for the loop, and you can put off outside the loop. So it has the same effect of stopping the motor once this happens.